nothing is good for you. This is how right. Okay, good morning everyone. And thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm very grateful you took the time to come and be here with us. My name is Master Yung Hua. I've been a monk for many, many years. I specialize in uh, meditation. Please feel free to interrupt me anytime you feel like it. Uh, if uh, you think you want me to repeat or it's not clear to you, please ask. Uh, and there's a technical term I'd like to introduce to you today is the word samadhi, which is a Sanskrit. Uh, uh, samadhi uh, is, uh, means uh, basically concentration. So we teach you Chan meditation, or sometimes I use the word Chan because uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, equivalent, is to help you increase your concentration. Uh, you can go from level zero to nine. Zero meaning scattered, okay? Meaning you cannot concentrate at all. They ask you to think about something, your mind cannot stay focused there for any uh, sustainable uh, length of time. That's what we call scattered, okay? And then when you learn meditation, any type of meditation, now it's very important for you to reach the first level of concentration. It's called first samadhi or it's first dhyana. Dhyana is uh, also a Sanskrit term. Uh, it also means, uh oh, uh, concentration. Uh, the difference between, between dhyana and samadhi is that uh, for us technical people, professionals, uh, dhyana is from one to four, and samadhi is actually measured from five to, to eight. Okay? So those are the eight levels of concentrations that uh, we experience teachers and take a look at you and kind of gauge where you are. Okay? Uh, whether you learn the other Buddhist and non-Buddhist concentration, you all can be measured from zero to eight. Sitting here next to me is Shana, and she started just like most of you at zero concentration. For example, uh, let's say you are worried about, uh, about meeting a project deadline. So you, you have this tension building up inside of yourself, okay? And so the tension, uh, the stress, builds up inside of you because of these layers upon layers of thoughts that arise in you and that you have a negative reaction to them. So far so good? Does it sound familiar? That's what happens to all of us, right? Stress builds up because of these thoughts keep on arising and arising. Okay, that's the nature of your, your mind right now, your mental processing right now. So, uh, as your samadhi level increases, okay, you're able to minimize the types of thoughts will arise in your mind. For example, at zero, you have zero control over the type of thoughts will arise in your mind. So you go to one, for example, you go to level one, you experience this, what we call bliss, this, uh, this uh, pleasant feeling that you didn't have before. Okay, when you were scattered, okay? Uh, and uh, when you experience that, then you, you begin to see the real benefit of meditation. Before that, I, I know the people who, who learn meditation for decades, they still at zero. They only come to the class they pay uh, in New York, how much do they pay, $15, $40, depending on how nice a location is, how big a location is. And they sit there and they feel good and they walk out after an hour. It's still at zero after all these years. Uh, at level one, or Dhyana one, or Samadhi one, you have fewer thoughts about three things. Okay? Food. Sleep. And sex. Okay? So you'll be less distracted by these types of thoughts. These types of thoughts will not arise as much in your mind as at you were at a low level. Don't worry, you still have a lot of sexual desires, but when you're in concentration, those thoughts won't arise. 
So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, and then you go to number two, the few types of thoughts that will arise. Okay. And you go up and up when you get to level nine. Okay. Level nine. That's when at that point in time, any type of thought that arises, whether it's food or sex, sleep or whatever, along the whole spectrum of thoughts, the nine level of samadhi is people can say, stop. And they stop arising. Does that mean like thoughts during meditation or thoughts just throughout the day in general? Like is that? Uh, for example, you're sitting in first level dhyana, you are unimmune, you are undisturbed by, uh, uh, let's say you sit here and, 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 and uh, someone uh, brings over, what do you like to eat here in Google? I like to eat uh, pizza, Neapolitan pizza. <laughs> so if I talk to you and, so, and, and she eats, uh, takes our slides of Neapolitan Nepo, pizza, by the way, you can, you can still talk and you still are, can be in Guyana one. Isn't that cool? You can be, that's called samadhi in movement or samadhi in stillness. Don't think of concentration and you must be still and like quiet and, and not talking. You can be in concentration and yet you're moving. Can you stop pain at level nine or is pain a thought or is pain something different from thinking? Yeah. From zero to eight, no. Nine, yes, in principle. However, once you get nine and beyond nine, of course, you know, child meditation go much higher than nine. I assure you, much, much higher. Okay. And at much higher levels, then you begin to understand uh, how to deal with pain, control pain. Uh, and uh, at th those levels, then uh, we uh, can figure out how to help you stop the pain. I understand about concentration and getting rid of distraction, but sometimes like a signal about pain or some information, like if we're concentrating on something, doing something, but we get this thought is a necessary signal that we're getting. Yes. Um, so when we talk about stopping thoughts, first okay. of all, it's a very human thing, but, but there are certain thoughts that have a purpose. Um, how do you distinguish uh, between, you know, unnecessary thoughts and necessary thoughts? That's one question I had. And the other one um, was that when you set a goal, like having these levels of samadhi, that creates also this whole desire and wanting to grasp, and it creates its own swirl, right? Mm -hmm. And then how do you manage? When you go to, to, uh, to, uh, to college, do you just go to college? Or you want to say, I'm going to go for a bachelor's, want to go for a master's, want to go for a PhD, want to go post postdoctorate? Do you have a goal? It's because you know there's a goal you want to go to because it's useful to you. Yes? Same thing. When you, when you do meditation, the reason that you haven't been told about goals and levels is because if you're told about goals and levels, the next question is that, how the heck do I get there? And where am I? Right? So that's why you don't, you're not told about goals. And besides, you're not, you don't have to pay. So why should we tell you? <laughs> Just kidding. All right? In meditation, or like in anything else in life, it's you who are stopping yourself, no one else. You are the worst obstacle to you reaching your goals. Yes or no? I observe in my prior life in a corporate world as well as a teacher, it's you, it's the people who stop short of their goals because they simply give up, they quit. Okay, so, so that's an answer to the second question. First question is, why do we want to stop thoughts? Uh, which thoughts are good, which thoughts are bad? Use the self know. okay? Uh, it's a matter of choice. It's not about good or bad. It's about you want to stop what kind of thoughts. Is that some of you prefer to have evil thoughts, bad thoughts arise in your mind because it's fun or whatever the reasons? It's your choice. We don't tell you what to do. We non-judgmental. We don't decide what's good or bad for you. You decide for yourself. And you decide 
this is not the kind of uh, thinking I want to indulge in. I want to continue to waste my time, my life on this. Let's stop this. Different individuals put different amount of work into meditation, okay. and unfortunately, the majority of your students drop out. But for the ones that are dedicated and the ones that are starting from level zero, let's say, what is a typical average time before reaching level nine? <laughs> Ambitious people. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> the 10 years is very good in the Theravadan tradition. It's very good. All right. Uh, uh, for us, uh, in uh, ours is like Mahayana tradition, uh, which is a, a, a quite a bit more advanced. So this guy here came to me and uh, he's casual, so I never really bothered training him until he became a monk. He's 70, you know, 70, could be 90 years old, we're not sure anymore. Uh, we stopped counting when you passed to 70. Um, I think he reached uh, ninth within three years. That's slow. I have others who reach uh, less than a year. These are exceptional students. Well, decently, pretty good people. To go from eight to nine is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, uh, why is it difficult? Because uh, when you reach nine, you suppress the ego. You are able to kill the ego, if you will. Okay, there's no more self. So it's difficult because the self doesn't like it. It does everything possible to stop you from getting there. So you're actually stopping yourself. Does it make sense? And that's why it's so difficult because if you do it on your own, you stop yourself. So in Mahayana, see the Hinayana, they do the brute force way. They go to the mountain, the forest, and they, they, they deprive themselves of all these things, you know, of, uh, of uh, food, of water, or sleep, or whatever, support, and people, company, and comforts of life, uh, cell phones, Google, well, search, uh, you know, which is necessary. I use it every day, and this is not a commercial. You know? um, and and, uh, and uh, so that's a brute force way. You, you, there's a way where they do it that, that uh, takes a long time, a little bit longer because that's still. And, and when you keep on doing that, you, you're cornering the ego, you're cornering the self to the point where you're able to, to put an end to it or, or learn how to control it, if you will. In Mahayana, we have much more advanced technology. Uh, approaches, secrets that will get you there a lot quicker because we know how we have many more ways to to identify it and strangle it well, much faster. Where do you think mindfulness sit in this whole like diagram? Like, does it ever have the ability to bring you into the first level, Diana? What is mindfulness? For me, uh, my understanding at this point is just simply focusing on the breath and bodily feelings and um, sort of try to let the thoughts just arise and fall by itself. Do you agree like. with that, everyone else? Is that what you think of mindfulness is? My personal understanding is that by doing the practice, it will change the brain structure in such a way that it will affect the rest of the day. Whichever task you do, you do it completely, like fully absorbed on that, like as if there is nothing else in the world and you don't think anything else and you are fully in that. Why do you call it concentration? Why do you call it mindfulness? You're so, describing to me, in my world, it's called concentration. It's not mindfulness. To me, it's called concentration. Any problems with that? Just concentrate on what you're doing. Why do you have to call it mind? Yes or no? The reason you have a problem with the concept of mindfulness is because the concept of mindfulness is poorly taught and explained to you. Okay. Uh, 
the mindfulness that you learn from is actually I learned my tradition is Chinese. So, uh, but um, so I can only tell you where I came, where I learned it from. It doesn't mean I know everything. Okay, <laughs> Just don't don't assume I know everything. Uh, the mindfulness uh, word mindfulness by all the teachers you learn they learn from. Uh, whether it's uh, Pali sources or Chinese or, or, or Sanskrit, it's um, come from the Chinese word uh, cheng nian, Vietnamese chan nian, hmm? cheng nian in Korean, Korean. Okay. And uh, that concept is not actually, uh, the, the concept behind it is really not mindfulness. It's called proper thought. It's not mindfulness. If you translate into as proper thought, no one understands what it is. Okay, uh, but if you translate as mindfulness, a lot is lost in translation. That's why in Mahayana, in where I came from, we don't talk about mindfulness uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's uh, not the real purpose of meditation. Meditation is about learning how to concentrate, how to concentrate better and better and better and better. It has nothing to do with mindfulness. All right. Uh, so uh, the, the, the proper thoughts is, is, uh, uh, is what mindfulness came from. Uh, and we, if when you have the proper thoughts, then it's easier for you to enter into samadhi or concentration. So if you learn meditation, you keep on saying, I'm mindful of my breathing, mindful of my breathing, then you are deluding yourself into being mindful instead of developing concentration. That's why you don't progress. The lady earlier asked me, why do you need to set goals Is in that kind of putting pressure on yourself. Uh, I talk about goals, you keep on talking about mindfulness because you keep on wandering around and meditating with our purpose. As per our instructions, mindfulness is built in already. So we don't talk about it anymore. It's like wasting your time. Does it help? Because again, you know, it's not the goal and no, uh, it's the goal of meditation. I teach you meditation in order to help you improve your concentration. If I don't do that, I'm wasting my time and your time. And number two, mindfulness, if you follow the instruction, you are mindful already. When I try to understand the concept of mindfulness, I sort of took the uh, Taoist way where think is being aware of what's happening and be the observer but just don't react to it yeah. and then you let things happen to you and you acknowledge uh all the nature all the you, you, you acknowledge all the things happening mm -hmm. so and it, this sort of remind me uh like a relationship between chen and the tao mm -hmm. because when i read things i sort of feel i couldn't tell them apart Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have some like essence of like the, the difference be between those two. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that? I was confused too. Okay. So <laughs> welcome to the club. <laughs> if you simply allowing yourself learning meditation to be aware of things without any real purpose, what does it do to you? If you are taught to meditate in order to increase your awareness of your thoughts, of your whatever, okay, the mere fact of being or having increased or experiencing increased awareness is actually detrimental to you. In what way? Because it makes you more scattered. On the other hand, my, my, my rule of thumb is very simple. Meditate in order to increase your concentration. Anything else less than that would be a distraction. As you get higher than nine and higher and higher and higher and higher, you understand more about what is nature, what is natural. We understand better how your mind works, why thought arises in you, 
or why is that you able to stop and so forth, which is way beyond the scope of this workshop today. Okay, it's just like the analogy is like uh, for us professionals, uh, we go to school, we learn to see training and practice to reach to get a PhD and then go back to, to uh, junior college to teach uh, uh, algebra 101. Okay, this is this class. All right, so uh, don't be confused about these different words, okay? For the purpose of meditation, all meditation approaches need to help you develop concentration, improve it. Agree, disagree. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Mm. Uh, yes? So shall we learn how to do that? Okay. Now, the concept behind it is that uh, the secret in Chinese time, sit longer. When you, when you meditate, any form of meditation, whether it's Taoist or Buddhist or non-Buddhist, doesn't matter. The mere fact when you keep your body still, what happens to your, to your head? The thoughts decreases over time. Problem is you don't sit long enough. What's long for, for an average, for, for normal practice? If you if we start practicing, sit longer is the answer. Yes. Whatever you can see right now, sit longer. All right. So do not, I recommend you don't sit on a cushion. Don't sit in a chair like me. It's only for old people. Okay. Because this, you can lean against it. Okay. It's not good for developing concentration. Okay, so for old people like me or people who have developed concentration already, it doesn't matter. Okay, so sit like that. We recommend that you try at least half lotus, which is the order is very important. Ladies and gentlemen, left leg, take the left leg, pull it, put it on top of your knee. All right, you see that? How easy it is? And some of you have legs up in the air. That's normal. Don't feel bad. How many people now? Can we count, do a quick uh, survey, please? How many of them can get in the full lotus? No cheating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See? Wow, wow. I'm, this is impressive. No wonder. We're at Google. The benefits are way too long. I don't have enough time today to tell you about the benefits. I've been spending years and years talking to my students about benefits. That's how many there are. It hurts because it's supposed to. <laughs> what? What's so funny about it? <laughs> it's supposed to hurt because when you bend your legs, it's not natural. Okay? And it's designed. This is, this is the Chinese secret. Many of the meditation uh, students, they are not told about this secret. They sit in the chair for years and decades. They get nowhere. By design, it stops your blood flow here in the knee, here in the ankle, okay, here in the hips. It's not natural. The longer you sit, the more, more difficult for your blood to try to flow through. And when blood doesn't flow through, it complains, the body complains, it, it hurts. I'm giving you a Chinese secret. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts like that every second. What is that called? Concentration. First part of your training is to train yourself to endure the discomfort, this or that pain a little bit longer than the last time. For you to get the Arnold uh, body, it takes a lot of pain, a lot of years, yes? Same thing meditation. You want to get the real benefits of meditation, you need to put in the work. If you do, you're willing to do that, you get so much more out of your meditation time than otherwise. I, instead of opting for the easy way to keep the students and collecting your, uh, your, uh, your uh, weekly visit fees, uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather teach you the proper way so that you get a lot more out of it. Does it have to be uh, left leg on this inside? and? Does it have to be this certain way, or you can um, switch, the, swap the two legs 
the position. People ask me that all the time. Can I switch legs? Yeah. Change the order. Help me sit longer. It also makes you more of a wimp. You're avoiding the pain. That's um, what really motivates you. Your and question I'm, I'm, you going against my wish is to inflict more pain on you. Uh, my actual question is, uh, when you pick a position, can you pick, do you have to be this way or the other way? Or when you start with? Uh, that's another secret. Okay, you, the, the order is very important. Uh, don't, don't do it like the Theravadans, they say, or the other teachers, they say, any order doesn't matter. Uh, yes, it matters. Why does it matter? I don't know. The, I, I can give you two reasons why I do it that way. Because my teacher said so. Okay, he says uh, it has to do with yin and yang. Okay, uh, your left leg is yin and the right leg is yang. So yin has to be underneath yang as a way of nature. So if you do the other way, okay, I never tried it. And that's why I, my answer to you is I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I always try it one way. And then the number two reason is that. Uh, don't try to cheat. It's supposed to be it's supposed to hurt. If you sit there and you're comfortable, oh, it feels good. After this, it would be nice to get a massage and then maybe a cup of coffee. A pleasant thought follows another pleasant thought and another one and another one, another one. What is that called? Scattered. So what you call mindfulness, Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it actually is called scatteredness in my world. Pain is good for you. Does that sound right? Increase your sit by one more minute, two more minutes. You concentrate longer on what? Pain, thank you. So what does it do to your concentration? It increases concentration. You guaranteed improvement if you do that. This is why we can't charge you. If I charge you 40 bucks to come in here and a guarantee and a satisfaction guaranteed, you all ask for a refund. You say, I don't need to pay you to learn how to torture myself. You will notice your legs are more flexible. Both legs, even if you sit in half lotus, both legs will be more flexible. Why is that? Scientifically speaking, of course. Because you're all engineers, so I have to use scientific terms. Uh, when you pain, you experience more pain, okay? Because the blood is being restricted from flowing naturally. Your, and you concentrate in the pain. Actually, what happens in your chi is being pushed being amped up and trying to break through, okay? As you sit longer, this becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. At the same time, your concentration increases. As with increased concentration, you have increased qi flow or qi non-flow at this stage. So far, so good? And eventually, it becomes stronger and stronger. It will break through. Uh, with a lot of pain, I ask you this question. <laughs> yes. Um, so as we're, we're doing uh, this practice and sitting, should we try and clear our mind? Or should we like draw the pain into full attention or try and focus on the breath? You can try to do anything you like. <laughs> you can think about breath. You can think about your mother. You think about lunch, which is near lunchtime or oh, past lunchtime for us already. Oh, God, the sacrifices we make. Uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter anymore. The objective is a very good question. The objective is not to quit before your committed uh, time, your goal. Okay? The first level is. The first, uh, the first drill you need to do for yourself, okay, to help build your foundation, the proper foundation for meditation is not to quit. Because your mind is very clever. 
Okay, you will come up with so many reasons to quit before it's time. That wimpy mind says, "No, it hurts too much. I'm going to hurt myself." Okay, I, you know, every time I stand up, I can't even walk. You're not supposed to be able to walk temporarily. We're here. We're available for, to help you. Uh, our, our, this is our community service. We got so much out of meditation, like Shana here, uh, that she even volunteered to help me teach meditation free. She spends a lot of money on her own to do that. This is what we do. We got so much out of it that it's a small gift to pay back to the community. My challenge to you is sit for three hours without any pain. Don't go with the easy stuff. Push yourself. Sit for three hours without any pain. You can do it on your own. You don't need us. However, just like you, I used to have a lot of questions when I said, "Will I hurt myself? Will I have this problem? I have this that problem," and I couldn't ask anyone. So now we make it a point to make ourselves available for you. Recently, I'm begin, becoming aware of my mortality. I don't have much time left, uh, and I wish to do more for this country than uh, before I go. That is, chant meditation at high levels uh, uh, will transform you. It will make you even smarter, more creative, uh, stronger. Much high level of stamina. Think of yourself as Da Vinci or uh, the other guy who died already, Steve Jobs, who made a reputation as a meditation practitioner, real serious. His skill level is what? Not very high. For us, it's like babies, infants. Okay? It's important for you in your work. At low levels, you are you will increase your stamina, a lot of good stuff in the, in the books, and you can read anywhere on the internet. Okay, those most of those are true, uh, but but uh, uh, that that must be based on the proper foundation. Okay, so I challenge you to build a foundation so that so that now in the future. After three hours, then uh, you can handle on yourself. Then you need probably more advanced instructions. Come and see me. Come and see us. Come and uh, join our uh, meditation retreats, you know, like for a few days, for a week, or something like that, where we can give you personal advices as to how to improve your skills even faster, build even a much better foundation. Don't stop there. Three hours is nothing. Even if after a few months uh, you get to nine, uh, don't stop there. Come and challenge me and say, "Hey, I'm nine, so well, you got for me." Hmm? All right, time is kind of limited, and I think I'm running over time. Uh, so allow me to challenge you. Okay, if all I'm doing with you today is show you the foundation of meditation, posture. Uh, my book has a lot more information. You're welcome to get a complimentary copy. We're here. We're available for, to help you. Uh, our, uh, this is our community service. We got so much out of meditation, like Shana here, uh, that she even volunteered to help me teach meditation free. She spends a lot of money on her own to do that. All right. Thank you all for coming. Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah.